Hi, I'm Captain Mike, and today's video is going to be about lessons learned. Uh, if you've been following my videos, you know that I have been experimenting with microwave kilns, removal of bone run nitrite, uh, making molds of all sorts, using a spray gun, an airbrush rather, to uh, apply uh, various glass separators, well actually only one. I did use it to apply boron nitride and I use it to uh, apply uh, a glass separator from Unique. Uh, I'm still working on that video. Uh, it is will be coming shortly. Uh, I've made it three times now and I haven't not been happy with it. But we'll have that uh, video on how to spray Unique's glass separator shortly. In the meantime, I'm going to tell you about Oh, maybe 11, 12 uh, different things that I have learned as I fooled with all these videos. And we will start with uh, one of the most important. And that is when you treat uh, your molds and you fire them, when you treat them with Unique's glass separator, uh, when you fire them to fusing temperatures or slumping temperatures, they turn absolutely white and there's no residue none whatsoever. So it's difficult to tell this from a new bisque mold. So here's what I recommend. Get you one of these high fire pencils that the ceramic company sells, kind of like a graphite pencil, and write on the back of it, in this case GS for glass separator. If you're going to use uh, some of the other, uh, I only know of one other glass separator, uh, did write the name of it on the back. Uh, you won't have to do that for boron nitrite, uh, it comes off on your fingers and it's really slick. So if you've got any molds that's got that on it, then, then you know it. And if you want to remove it, then you know when it's removed, it no longer come off on your fingers and it, and it looks different. Uh, and if you don't write on the back of them, like I didn't do on this one, and uh, here's what happens. Now, I showed this in an earlier video, uh, but what happened to this is there is no glass separator, no kiln wash, there was nothing. This was just a naked brand new mold that I made, and guess what? I filled it full of frit and fired it, and it was cracked all up. It is not coming out. Ruined mold, but that's fine. Hey, lessons learned. Now, next thing I'm going to show you is if you have stainless steel, now, it's really difficult to tell on this. But uh, has, this has been fired, uh, and the uh, the kiln, uh, uh, the uh, glass separator did not adhere properly, and it's probably because it wasn't cleaned properly. It was lifting in a few places, so I already knew you should burnish these. I get in a hurry, and I don't burnish all of my stainless steel before I apply anything. If you're going to apply um, uh, uh, boron nitride, you still need to do this. Definitely, if you're going to use any of that universal mold release, you need to do this too because it wants to kind of ooze off with you they, they claim so anyway i took this out to my grinding wheel uh has a wire brush on it you can pick them up cheap at harbor freight if you don't have one just make sure one side's got a wire brush on it and you can burnish it now it is now prepared uh to accept the, go the mold release of your choice okay the next thing we're going to do is talk about projects that you have completed. You're, uh, you've already did a slump job or a drape job, whatever, and it is just beautiful. You're just tickled pink. So you can't wait to give it to Grandma. You can't wait to sell it to Bubba so he can give it to his wife for their anniversary. And so you go ahead and, you know, a day or two after you're through with it, you give it to them. Wrong. Especially when you're dealing with float glass. Uh, and float glass in particular, because both of these that I'm going to show you are float glass with float glass compatible frit. <clears throat> now, this stuff's been working good. The frit has been working good. But I had this particular bowl at a show uh, about a week ago, and uh, someone come up to me and said, it'd been sitting out in the sun, but that shouldn't make any difference. They came up to me and said, do you know there's a crack in that bowl? And I said, say it ain't so. I went and looked, and sure enough, there was a little crack. You cannot see it now. It was right along in here. Not a very big crack, but a crack all the same. 
I refired this and uh, we'll see if it cracks back. Point is, this bowl has been made for a month, at least a month. It's the same with this one. This one is in this mold, but I just sat it in this mold for grins and giggles. My wife liked this one so much when I made it to start with that uh, she took it home with her. And it's the same thing. It's been sitting up the house about a month inside, out of the sun. And it got a wicked crack all the way down through here. Again, I re-slumped it. And it fused, although you can see the crack. And it actually needs to be slumped again just to see if that will really heal even more. But these won't be for sale. These will be sitting around for a while. Well, actually, I never will sell either one of these. But they'll be sitting around for a while before I even give them away, just to see. So, word of caution. When you do a glass project, I don't care what it is or whose glass, if you can, let it sit around for a while and watch it to see if it develops cracks because glass will develop cracks. You, I have got a piece right now I'm refiring that I, I'm almost positive I got incompatible 96 mixed with 90. I don't know how I done that. I was super, super careful. It's a beautiful job. But it cracked when I took it out of the mold this morning. It was cracked out of the mold. So I'm refiring it. We're going to see. Uh, but just keep that in mind. That's a, that's, that could be embarrassing. Uh, now, this is, this is kind of a fun one. I did an entire video on uh, fusing marbles. And I know some of y'all ask yourself, in, in, in a microwave kiln, so I know some of y'all ask yourselves, how did he get those marbles to stay in one spot? Well, the four little ones that I fused wasn't any problem. I mentioned in the video, I moved them up close together and I super glued them. They wasn't going anywhere. And they generally will stay there until you fire them and they stick together. But if you're firing one to get a small pendant, or you're firing the great big one here to uh, get, uh, you know, make a bigger pendant, they want to roll around. You stick it right there, and you start to walk over to the microwave kiln. It's not going to be there when you get to the microwave kiln. If you put it in your microwave kiln, and you turn it as you fire it, odds are it's going to move. So what did I do? Simple. I filed a flat spot on the bottom of them. Now, I did it on all of these. <laughs> it's just kind of a little cheat, and I just forgot to mention that in the marble melting microwave video. But they'll sit there. Now, you can, you can grind them flat several different ways. Uh, one of the ways is you use one of these little swell little things right here, which is a, you get them on eBay. They're not real expensive. It's just a wet dry grinder and uh, diamond pad. I use the dry pads. You can well use a wet pad if you want. Get about a 40 grit, 50 grit, and start with that. It'll be, it'll grind it down in no time. If you're doing it dry, make sure you, you use a mask and you have proper ventilation because you'll be breathing the glass if you don't. The other little thing that I use, let's see if we can get over here and get a picture of it, is that little jewel right there. And if you don't have one, save up your money and get you one. It's just a little flat lap. And it is pretty doggone neat. Uh, it, uh, it does everything that you need for one to do. You do many things with glass with it, but uh, it really works around these marbles. So that's it on my marbles. That's my secret on my marbles. Lessons learned. And it was a lesson learned because I had to figure out how to make those things stop moving around. Uh, now, occasionally you're going to have to recoat something that you do where you put a glass separator on or a glass release agent on. This mold originally, and it was featured in another in the last video too, but it uh, it had uh, boron nitride on it, and as if you remember, if you watched my video, it pulled the boron nitride out. And which leads up to a perfect example of uh, what you need to do. Um, you're going to have to go inside. I use th this open uh, poured sandpaper like stuff and you're going to have to sand it. 
and you'll just sand it because you don't you're going to have a, a line here where where they separated and you'll just sand it sand it sand it and blend them in then blow it off really good clean it out really good reapply your glass separator your universal mold release whatever you're going to do uh, but you're going to have to do that that happened because i didn't get the boron nitride out properly and we're going to go back and recoat it and see if we can solve that little problem uh, this one right here is another one uh, it has not worked very well I'm gonna to have to sand it. You can see I've got a couple of them, but they just all broke. But I'll take that and I'll sand it really well all around. Then I'll reapply and we'll see if we can get this thing back up and working again. Uh, so that kind of covers on, on, on that. Now occasionally, occasionally, you will pull a piece off of your mold and you just spot it. Now this, this, these are susceptible to pulling this, especially if you don't use the the free that comes with the glass separator, but I've had them do it with boron nitrite, and boron nitrite is powdery to start with. Still, it would pull pieces. This one got a little piece pulled right here. So you'll just kind of reapply a little, just with a brush, just the, the glass separator where it needs to be. And if you need to touch it up with sandpaper to make it blend, that's fine. You should know how to do that. And But you can repair it, is what I'm saying. Also, sometimes when you first apply your glass separator with an airbrush, uh, if I ever get around to finishing that video. And this thing dries and, and you, you you fire up at 800 degrees, you notice that it, there's there's light spots all in it. It's just like you missed it. Well, that's probably what happened. You didn't get a really good even coat. It's okay to go back and reapply it. Just spray over it again, put it back in the kiln, fire at 800 degrees, shouldn't hurt a thing. At least it has not with me. It has not with me. All of these things that I'm telling you are things I have done, and they're my uh, uh, results and my failures and my successes. So your mileage may vary, uh, but um, uh, we'll, keep, we'll continue on with some things. Uh, I've noticed that a lot of times, especially when you're uh, reapplying, uh, well, this is over glaze and it happens over glaze and it happens over removed boron nitride, you'll get little dark spots on your, on, after you fired it to 800 degrees, there'll be some dark, ugly spots, and that will worry you. It worried me until I found out that it doesn't matter. Once you fire it to glass temperatures, it goes all white. Those those spots have so far went away. So that's a lesson learned. And uh, uh, you know, if you also if you fire these, they'll be cream colored when you first do them. When you first spray them, they'll be cream. You're supposed to fire them at 800 degrees. This is with glass, unique colors, glass separator. When you fire it at 800 degrees, it turns gray. Fire at diffusing temperatures, it goes bisque white. So if you fire this the first time, and for some reason like I did, you cut the kiln off when you think it's where it needs to be, and it didn't get hot enough. If it don't get up to about 800 degrees, it's not gonna turn gray. So if it doesn't turn gray, uh, odds are it's all right if you've taken it up, taken it up past 700 degrees, but go ahead and fire it again. Don't matter. I mean, I've learned, especially with a product that, that you're learning to use, by all means, follow the instructions. Don't be a dummy like me. So fire it over to 800 degrees, let it turn gray, you're good to go. Use glass, sep uh, glass separating free on it. Move on. Uh, this, is a, this is a really good one here. and, and, it, and it, Again, I'm not knocking anybody's product. I'm not really endorsing anybody's product. I'm just telling you what works for me. And this little example here has got to do with frit. I make a lot of little, you know, uh, dragonflies, butterflies, and things like that that have blended colors. I just like to do that. I also have some great big texture molds that uh, I have koi fish and some dragonflies that they work well for putting frit on the mold and putting the glass on top of it. And uh, uh, it's like this one right here. So it, it, you know, it needs to be fired again, not a problem. But you see where I had to, where I've got the frit. Now, when you have boron nitride, this is one thing I found and that it, 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 it didn't please me. If you have boron nitride on this mold and you start to sweep this stuff back in there, 
it picks up the boron nitrite, okay, and deposits it down in your frit. I can't be 110% sure that that has caused some issues, but I've had some issues, especially on these sunflowers when I had them treated properly, and they would develop different things in them that they shouldn't have, they shouldn't have developed voids and things that they shouldn't have. I attributed it to the boron nitrite powder. Now, the great thing about the glass separator so far is that when you move your frit around on whatever type of mold you're doing so that your frit's where it needs to be, uh, it, it doesn't take any powder with it. If it takes any of that free, I have yet to notice that that powder is more of a ceramic and less of a, of a, a boron nitrite chemical. And it doesn't seem to affect it. Uh, if I find out that it does, I'll let you know. But right now, you can put free on it, and there's not going to be much on it anyway. And you can move your frit around just fine and get it where you want it as you put the other uh, colors of frit in there, and you won't have any contamination. Um, now, um, here's a really neat one. And I just found this out the other day, and I don't know why I didn't think about it. I already, I've, I've been casting stuff for a long, 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 long time. You can take a ceramic mold, and you can cast slip in it. Now, normally you use a plaster mold. I have a video on how to make them, and may have more videos on how to make different ones, but this is an example right here. The fact is, this mold has even been treated uh, with a glass separator, and it wasn't, it wasn't for this project. It was just that it happened to already be treated, and I wanted to see what the dragonflies would do. And as you can see, it has already started to dry and pull away from the frame, which means it is going to work. Uh, so you can cast, if you have something you want to cast in a ceramic mold, try it. Uh, you know, here's my little bee tile. It's, it's not drying as fast, but it's drying. It's getting there, and it will, it will get there, and then I'll have this little bee tile, and it'll pop out probably tomorrow. This will pop out sometime later this afternoon. Now, don't worry about ruining anything. This is all water-based. Worst case scenario, is you're going to say, gee whiz, it didn't work, you're gonna wash it out with water. Clean the mold up, let it dry, okay? You're not gonna ruin anything here because you're not gonna fire it in this mold. You're only going to dry, you know, get it dried where you can pop it out, clean it up, put it in your ceramic mold, your ceramic kiln, excuse me, and fire it with your other ceramic stuff. And, but this does open up a, a world of possibilities if you're wanting to do sprig work or you just want something different that you don't have a plaster mold of. So that covers that. I, I was real pleased with that. Um, now this one, <laughs> this one here is also a, 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 is, is really important because it's caused me much heartache. One of the reasons I had to shoot one of the uh, how to spray glass separator videos over again, it just got really convoluted. My air gun kept clogging up. I did went through all the things that I have showed you in past videos on how to take care of this little cheap Harbor Freight air gun. I went through, I even disassembled this whole gun and cleaned it. It worked sporadically. Then I found out, well I remembered because it's the same way with air guns, uh, spray guns, there's a little teeny tiny hole in this thing right here. And this glass separator especially will clog it up quick. See, I don't know whether you can see that needle coming through that thing or not. But maybe you can, maybe you can't. But it's a little tiny hole, not much bigger than that pin right there. Keep you one of these hat pins or uh, whatever kind of pin will go through that hole. Keep it handy. Every time you fill it up, clean that hole out. You won't have any problems with your air gun. That was a biggie for me because when this thing starts to spray incorrectly, oh my goodness, your language is going to get colorful. So... That is a big one. Keep it, keeping this part clean and keeping that air hole. The air hole is very important. Lessons learned. Lessons learned. Uh, now, again, I can't state too much that when you do these molds, when you clean them, when you take the boron nitride off, things like this right here, it's going to have to be boron nitride. It's going to have to be removed. 
you're gonna have to clean it much more than you are a standard uh, mold like this. These seem to come clean pretty good. I, the brush can just get to them, all the cracks. Still gonna have to clean them a lot, but uh, you know, uh, that's important. Clean them, I mean clean them. When you think it's clean enough, clean it again, and then after that, clean it another time. You can't get it too clean. And then apply your glass separator of choice, and that'll be it. Now, um, the um, way to, I, the last thing I got, I had said like I had something else, but I can't remember. So we're gonna conclude it with this. As, as I experimented with all these this stuff, uh, some of it didn't do well because I didn't do what I was told to do. And in this case, this, this mold right here was not clean. You'd think it's simple enough and it would clean, but it was not clean properly. And I applied the boron nitrite and it did exactly what they said it would do. If there was any substance, any foreign substance left on that mold when you apply the glass separator, it's gonna lift. Guess what? It lifted. It also took a chunk of glass out. That's not a problem. I can get the glass out. In fact, I already have. And, uh, you know, and then I'll take this mold and I will super, super clean it, reapply, and see. But here's what happened. It lifted the glass separator and it stuck to the glass. Well, being cheap me, I didn't want to throw this away. So I went out there to my, my grinder. Remember the Harbor Freight uh, grinder I told you to go buy, the cheap one with a brush on one side? And you went out and bought it, right? Okay, so you got it sitting there on your bench now. I can clean that stuff off. It comes right off with a brush. Just grind it on. It put a little bit of patina on it, and it, you know, it's not super, super shiny. Probably shiny as it would have been. This is kind of a, this mold is not super slick. But it worked out accept acceptable. So you can get this off. Any, any glass piece you got that you want to get whatever's stuck on it, kiln wash, whatever, the wire brush won't take the glass off at all but it will take off the kiln wash and it will take off the glass separator so that next time you put the glass separator on, you do it properly. Okay, that is it. Uh, I don't have uh, anything else to add at this time. This kind of covered it. Uh, me and OBC down here, she's, uh, she's ready to go home and eat some supper. And uh, so that's what we're gonna do. So I'm Captain Mike. And that is my video on all this various and assorted lessons learned. Uh, I hope you got something out of it. I am Captain Mike, and I am out of here.